So with that, I'm going to kick things off to introduce Agritecture Designer. As Director of Digital Strategy, this has been one of my main focus points over the last year at Agritecture. Um, you know, about a year ago or so when I joined the team, we started looking at the data that we'd accumulated from doing six years of, of urban farming projects around the world and, um, and really looking at the, the numbers of those, of those farms. And one of the things we realized is that we really wanted to come up with a more accessible way to make that data um, open and accessible, but also actionable and have it make sense to people from around the world that were looking to start urban farms, but just were unsure as to what the, the numbers looked like, uh, what kind of budget they would need for a indoor hydroponics operation or a simple greenhouse setup. Um, and so, you know, after some months of research and some early user testing and early adopter feedback, um, we, we developed a strategy here with Agritecture Designer to make that data um, available. So what I'm going to share with you is um, I'm going to run you through kind of my um, admin accounts, some of the projects that I've created and some of the tools with Agritecture Designer and just show you what that looks like. And uh, so I'm going to hop in here. And what you're actually going to see here is you're going to see everything that's basically after you have paid um, for the, the platform. Now, there is a free version of this um, where you answer a quick survey. It's about 11 questions on what your future vision for your urban farm looks like. Um, and what you're seeing here is actually the results of that. So we give you three things back after you fill out that survey. One is we just kind of put everything you've told us down onto paper in a design friendly way. You can actually share this with friends and just get feedback on, you know, here's the vision for my future urban farm. Um, the second is we give you a, a quick project timeline. One of the things we heard a lot from folks that especially did not have any farm planning background was, you know, what's the order of operations here? How should I think about, um, you know, moving from step one to, to step two? And how do, I, how do I understand what the future roadmap looks like um, to get to the point where I actually am growing? Um, and then the last part of that, which I'll share here, is um, what we call the inspiration. With the inspirations here, what we do from your survey results is we ping our um, back end where we have hundreds of urban farms, of real world urban farm examples from around the world. And we've scored them based on a number of different criteria that kind of matches some of the questions that you'll get asked in that survey. And what we do is we create this relevant score for all of those farms in our system. So based on your specific results, so in my case, it's those, those results I shared with my vision there, um, you'll get three farms back here just for inspiration. So this is meant to really help you understand that, you know, for almost any concept that you're coming up with, there's going to be um, other real world examples out there that you can pull inspiration from. Um, so you can see here, just based on what I selected, I think I must have selected like a rooftop greenhouse, um, looking at hydroponics or aquaponics. Uh, Lufa Farms, VIGH in Brussels, Gotham Greens in Brooklyn, all examples of rooftop um, farming systems. And so um, we just provide some links in here for additional reading from the, um, and then links to the website as well. So again, all that is, is in the free version, but if you do sign up, um, we have two subscription options, either $99 or $249 um, for different access levels. You'll also get those results in this dashboard that you get access to. Okay, so moving into um, basically the, the paid version, um, the education section here hosts our commercial urban farming course. This is a course that we taught over the last three years at our office in Brooklyn and now have, have moved fully online. Um, so it's about two hours and 40 minutes of video content broken into pretty concise five minute or so modules of information. And we have six overall lessons um, that, that make up the commercial urban farming course. So I'm just going to hop into Henry's section here. Each one is taught by a different expert on our staff. And so you'll see Henry's section. Um, this is a first module, a little eight minute video. We also have additional resources that come with the course. So if you go into this tab, you'll see um, here's where Henry talks about impact categories and talks about fundraising. So what we do in a lot of the modules where it's relevant is we match 
um, resources or even activities. So Henry has a little impact category activity that downloads an Excel document. Um, and then we'll also link out to the reports, the industry reports that we find most relevant. So this is an ag funder investing report from 2019 that covers some high level numbers that Henry gets into. So you can just see here some of the other lessons here, economics taught by Yara, um, choosing your systems technology structures taught by Javid, our lead systems designer. We get into understanding your market, choosing your crops with David Caesar, our lead agronomist. Um, CEA energy considerations, so how to think about climate control from Alberto Lopez. And then Eric Roth um, gets into organic um, options, including aquaponics and aeroponics, and if that's the right option for your, your CEA farm. Um, so that's the education section. Again, you'll have access to this with either level subscription that you sign up for, the 99 or the 249. And then I want to move into the last set of features here, which is available just at the 249, the starter bundle. And the first one is our project feasibility tool. This is really the most unique aspect of anything that we built. So this is the thing that we really, that took us months and months to, um, to get to this point. Um, and this is where you can really create a full um, feasibility analysis for really any controlled environment farm. So I'm going to show you just really quickly what the input page looks like, just to show you that, you know, what we try to do here is simplify the process down to, you know, giving you the ability to fill out this form in five minutes or less. Um, so you'll make about 20 different selections, um, but we want to make sure that there's selections that you could make without having to have too deep of a level of knowledge regarding agriculture. So just, you know, some options here, you'll choose between vertical farm or greenhouse. Um, if you choose greenhouse, you can choose to put that on a roof or not. You'll choose your local currency. We have over 30 different currencies to choose from, um, feet or meters. Um, and then answering some options around the land in the building, the site area, you'll select crops. We have nearly 100 different crops that you can choose from, from a crop library. Um, and if you're ever unsure, we have these info icons that oftentimes will link out to our get help section um, where we have a ton of FAQs that are preloaded in there. And if you have a question from there, there's a link to get in direct contact with us. Um, there's also some additional links in there to some of the, the best resources that we've found, some of which exist on our agriculture blog. Um, so a ton of information in that get, get help section. And then I wanna show you just quickly what this looks like once you've completed a project is you'll get this financial summary report, um, which we break out into a couple different tabs. Uh, but the main idea here is we really wanna provide you with an understanding as to the, the high level numbers. What could your farm achieve from a revenue standpoint? Um, how much is it gonna cost you from a budget or CapEx standpoint? And what are some of the ongoing costs? Now, it's really easy to go back and edit your project. You can do so here and change some of those considerations. Or what you can also do once you've created multiple projects and you can create unlimited projects in here is we just launched a comparison tool. So you can actually compare now different completed projects. And what we'll show you is some of the high level numbers down here so that you can compare, oh, okay, you know, for this greenhouse, you know, my CapEx was a little bit lower, um, but my OpEx was significantly lower, um, right? And so you can compare, oh, that's probably because I chose a lighter duty uh, greenhouse, for example. Um, but you can also see here, you know, my max annual revenue is much lower than it is here. So, um, so this is a, a tool that we're continuing to kind of build out. Let me go back quickly to the, the summary report, just to show you some of the other numbers that we provide. Um, you have jobs created, potential population fed, and again, info icons to explain, um, if you have questions as to what these mean. CapEx breakout. You have your operating expense breakout and an annual summary. This is a 15 year annual projections for the farm. Now, one of the things I wanna mention is we're always trying to use user feedback. We launched this platform about two months ago um, to the general public. So we're always using your feedback to create new little features in here. So like one idea that people have given us recently is, hey, you know, rather than going back and editing my project, it'd be great if I could, if I could change some options um, in the CapEx breakout. If, for example, I saw that, you know, this budget was a little beyond, let's say I had a budget of $300,000, you 
this is 39 K over my budget. Maybe there's some options where I could just dial things down. Um, for example, I could choose a cheaper growing system, which might impact my yield. Um, but I'm willing to do that because I have a, a hard budget. So, um, that's just an example of something that came from some user feedback recently that we're now um, on the product side trying to go back and, and add that optionality. The last thing I want to mention just really quickly is you might have some questions around maximum or, or your revenue of your farm in general. Obviously, that is going to be totally location um, driven. Um, you know, here in New York, you're going to see obviously a very different price tag for locally grown arugula than you might see in uh, the middle of, of a rural area like Iowa or, you know, certainly in other locations around the world. So we created a market research tool that allows you to plug in real world numbers that you're seeing um, out in your local market. And then we have an algorithm on the back end that basically um, creates a fair market price for your crop. And again, you can do this in your own local currency when you select a currency um, in, the, in the project section. Um, then that's the, the, the currency that you'll have applied to this market research section as well. So just to show you how I wound up with that $6.88 for my arugula here, I filled out four product evaluations that I found um, in different locations. You can see this was direct to consumer. This one I found at a supermarket. You can weigh the quality score. You can tell us about the packaging, the sales unit, the price tag. Um, and then you tell us how you are looking to sell your crop and we'll, we'll calculate that, that fair market price. Yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to, to get into. And then from there, I'll leave it to the Q&A. It looks like we've already got a couple questions in. So um, I will uh, come back after Yara and Jeffrey's section um, to answer some of those questions.